Hi goalies, we are so excited to present to you the first ever live goalie virtual training, which is starting this weekend. So Em and I just wanted to come together and present to you a little info video on how to best prepare for this weekend and for your future virtual trainings. Um, there's a lot to know as to create the perfect at home space and other tips and tricks to have um, the best experience for your virtual training. So, Em, I'm going to make you big here. Okay. Emily, what is the most important thing that these athletes do need to know for this weekend? Okay, so the most important thing is to have good Wi-Fi. So wherever you decide to do this goalie training, your trainer, your expert, is going to be up on a computer screen. And so I highly recommend making sure wherever you choose to train, it would be better to compromise a little bit on the space you have to ensure really great Wi-Fi. Um, and that's also important to keep in mind with whether or not you're choosing an outdoor space or an indoor space. Goalkeepers can have successful training outside or inside, um, but it's important to keep in mind that if it's poor weather, wherever you are around the world, that you have a backup plan for training inside that still works. And with that being said, with the internet and the Wi-Fi, one option yeah. too is using an ethernet cord to assure the best Wi-Fi or internet access for you guys. Absolutely. And that's something that I will be doing as your trainer this coming Saturday is I will make sure that I have an Ethernet cable so that there's zero interruptions in our goalie training. Awesome. In addition to Wi-Fi, make sure that your computer has access to a power outlet or preparing for the training means fully charging your laptop. For best success, I recommend using a laptop. Um, if you don't have one of your own, see if you can borrow a family member's for these special trainings. This way you can have it up, it's set up, and you can easily see uh, what the trainer is doing, and then you can easily engage in the chat. So what are some at-home space tips that these goalies can arrange in their house or in their backyard for this weekend? It doesn't matter what the flooring looks like as long as you can be active in the space. So whether it's tiling in a kitchen flooring or it's carpeting like this room here or it's an unfinished basement floor or the inside of a garage, it's all okay. Um, as long as you can be active in the space, that's what's most important. The other thing to consider is that you want to be able to move freely within the space. Now, we are all going to be designing trainings for you to do in a home. We recognize that you don't have an entire, you know, perfect field space. Okay, so you're going to want to make sure that you can walk about five normal walking steps from the back of your space to the front of your space. So that way, you can make sure that if you want to use this direction, you can take enough steps before you get to the computer where the coach will be. The other thing is that from the middle of the space, you want to make sure that you can walk about three steps in either direction, okay? So you can move freely from side to side. The other thing to remember is that you do not have to start every exercise from the middle of your space. It's totally okay that if we're moving to the right during the exercise, just start on the left-hand side of your space, okay? Or if you're moving forward a lot, you can start back here. Don't imagine or that you have to begin every single exercise from the middle of the space. It's important to remember so you give yourself enough room. And Emily, with that, if a goalie is planning on doing it outside, um, that's not under cover, they mm -hmm. should make sure that in case of rain or inclement weather, that they have an alternative indoor space, correct? Yeah, absolutely. So if a goalkeeper is planning on doing it outside, that's totally fine as long as they have good um, internet access. And as long as you have a backup plan to move inside, that's cool. Another important thing to consider when you're setting up your goalie training space is you want to think about those balls that are rebounding. So if you have something like I do, like I'm going to take you with me here, I have this couch. And you can see that I've set up pillows along the bottom of the couch here. Now, that helps me to prevent balls from rolling underneath there because I could imagine that if I start off with 10 tennis balls, by the end of the training, I might only have one left because they all rolled under the couch. Now, obviously, um, if you're outside, you don't want to use pillows to put them underneath something. For example, if you're working in your garage, uh, you wouldn't want to bring your pillows outside to put them underneath the car, but you could use a box or something else just to block off that space. Try to keep it as convenient and easy as possible to set up your space.
So let's talk about where you're going to put the coach. Where are you going to put the goalie trainer? I would not recommend putting them all the way on the ground because it wouldn't be comfortable to watch what they're doing or to approach a computer that's resting on, on the floor during the Q&A segment or you want to type a question into the chat during the training. So what I would recommend is finding something like a stool, okay, or a chair, um, really anything that has a flat top that's safe to put your computer on, and you're going to want to put it there and then rest the computer on top of it, okay? So I'm going to move you onto this space, okay? So now you can see that I can be back here doing my exercises, but I can easily see what's going on. You're not too low of a level where I can't easily see what the coach is talking about or what they're demonstrating. Um, it also makes it much more comfortable to type questions and interact in the um, interactive Q&A. This is a different kind of training. It's virtual training. I know. I get it. But you need to prepare as if you're going to a normal training, that you're going to the field. And so what would you bring to the field besides your goalkeeping kit? You're going to bring a full water bottle. You're not going to show up at practice without a water bottle. Could you imagine you're on this FaceTime training and, you know, the coach is demoing something amazing and you totally forgot your water? So prepare and bring your water bottle. Okay? The other essentials is absolutely bring a notebook. This is my clipboard, um, and it has some paper on top, and I have a pen. Uh, obviously, you're going to be able to watch these videos back, but live in the moment, you might hear something or catch something or see something in the chat that you don't want to forget. You immediately want to take a second, write it down, and save it in your goalie notebook. Um, if you don't have a goalie notebook yet, this is an awesome reason to start it, and I promise you'll come away with some awesome, valuable tips and pointers in there that you'll want to take into fall preseason. The trainers are creating these exercises, understanding that you have access to limited equipment. I also think that it's always essential to have some cones nearby, or if you don't have cones, you can use something like a water bottle, a shoe, anything else that's a cone or cone substitute. If a trainer, if one of the goalie trainers wants you to have something extra, but that's a household item, right? So maybe they want you to make a little note card that has a color on it or a number on it. We will give you that information ahead of the training with them. Um, but we realize that we're only going to use household objects or something that's easy for you to create on your own. I recommend that you have cones. If you don't have cones, that's totally fine. You can use something like a water bottle as a cone substitute, or you can use plastic cups or a shoe uh, or a bowl that isn't breakable, anything like that. Just something you can maybe move around or move up to and move back from. The other piece of essential equipment, obviously, is balls. Now, I recommend having um, some tennis balls and hockey balls if you have them. Uh, you can definitely do all of these exercises with tennis balls so because they're the most easy to pick up if you don't have them already. For example, Target, which is an essential store, sells tennis balls. Um, you also could order them. You can have, I, I recommend tennis balls, uh, especially if you're doing it inside, so you can protect your parents' uh, lamps or favorite bureau. And in addition to that, if you have racket balls, balls, uh, even ping pong balls, you can probably use for some of the exercises. And the key to success with the balls is having them in some kind of a container like this. You want to be able to easily move the container around to where you're starting the exercise. So you can imagine that I'm back here to start my exercise. And I have, I need two tennis balls, and I do the exercise. Woo, I saved it. Woo, I saved it. And now I need to get more balls. They're easily accessible in a container that I can move around the room. Also, having a container makes ball collecting a heck of a lot easier. And one other tip for getting more balls is you could ask your neighbors or your friends who live nearby if they can loan you any balls. Just ask them to put it out in their front yard. You can collect it with gloves, wash your hands after, disinfect it. But that's another great way to get some extra balls for these trainings. Yeah. Fun tip. Martine Driver actually washes his hockey balls every season in the dishwasher. You could do that. <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> It's true. So goalies, you are creating a space that you can be successful in. It doesn't all have to look the same and it doesn't have to be perfect. But a few tips like blocking the underneath of a couch or making sure you have a container for your balls or making sure you show up every training with a full water bottle are tips that are easy for you to control and will ensure that you get the most possible out of these awesome virtual training sessions. Yeah, Em, and I, I agree. So in addition to creating a great space, having the equipment um, and having good Wi-Fi, I think something else that's really important 
is that they come with a mindset that they're ready to train and train as though someone's watching, which is really hard virtually, but we need to have that discipline this spring if we really want to maximize how much we grow um, throughout the season. And some personal tips that I have for you is to wake up at least 90 minutes before the training starts. So for example, goalies who are on the East Coast um, in the USA, that's 10 a.m. So wake up definitely no later than 8.30. I know if you're coming from Cali, you're going to have to wake up a little bit early. But um, if you know that you like to eat, uh, definitely eat breakfast beforehand. If you know that you need an hour to digest, make sure that you're done eating by 9 a.m. Again, if you're from the East Coast. Um, Mm -hmm. And then make sure you get a good warm up in before the training. That way, we're not, um, quote unquote, wasting the whole first quarter of our training with these valuable experts on warming up so that you guys can get a good warm up in beforehand. Um, so, Em, what are some other tips that you have so they can be mentally and physically prepared um, when cool. the training starts? Yeah, so everything you said I think is extremely important. Um, I would prepare for this as if I were going to the field for a training. I think that it is so important that goalkeepers are ready to actively participate. Yes, you are going to have access to the video recording after the session is over, but the best way that you can take advantage of this experience is to participate in it live. Now, if that means that maybe you are working out in a space that's inside and maybe later you want to try these same exercises outdoors or you have a sibling who uh, is a field hockey player and you want to practice these exercises with a sibling who's a field hockey player later, totally fine, but actively participate in the training session. It is 90 minutes that it's an investment that you're making in yourself and being prepared ahead of time means that it's more than 90 minutes that you're actually engaging in, uh, in a field hockey practice. Um, and I think what's cool about it being live and actively engaging is knowing that like, you know, when you do your training with Maddie Hinch, for example, you know that she's there over in England at the same exact time, like in her backyard or in her living room doing that training just for you. And you know that all the other goalies that are also participating in this training throughout the USA or any other country is also participating at the same time. And I think that there's like some awesome morale um, around that. What do you think, Em? Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. We are all going to be in this together. And I think, you know, it's this is what's different about this experience for you versus just looking on YouTube for videos. Um, you know, you are actively going to be able to try the motions. And I say try it full out. Don't just think like, okay, I'm going to do the motions. Really give it your all in the space that you have because maybe if you're doing it at speed, if you're trying hard, if you're pushing yourself, if you're sweating, you're going to recognize that maybe you have a question about it or maybe you're going to, you know, discover uh, exactly what they're saying is true. Um, That's how you're really going to get the most out of the pointers that they're giving you and the exercise that they're creating. We recommend that for best success and the most options with your training, that you have a parent or sibling come and help you out during the first hour of the training. So on the East Coast, that's 10 to 11 a.m. Saturday and Sunday. Now, if they don't, if you don't have someone who can help you out, that's okay. We will ensure that all the exercises can be modified to do as an individual. That said, I do think that if you are a more advanced goalkeeper, adding someone who's going to be playing those balls is a really easy way to ramp up the level of intensity of that exercise. For all of the trainings, Emily is going to be present. She's going to be in the corner, just like I am right here. And she's going to be answering questions in the chat. So Emily, for that first hour of training, obviously the goalies are going to be training and not texting in the group chat. Um, But if there is um, like a break in between um, two drills, that could be a good time for them to type you a question in the chat and you could help answer. And you could ask that coach the question, correct? Absolutely. So I would recommend that during the explanation of the exercise or during a teaching moment where the trainer is trying to explain something or show you something, that you come up nice and close to the screen. And in that moment, you can type a question in the chat during that break. Then there is going to be a moment for you yourself to go and do the exercise Don't worry about hanging on to every word in the chat because everybody's going to be doing their exercise. Step back from your computer, do the goalie training, and then there'll be a moment to come back up. And then this Saturday for the first training, while Emily is your trainer, um, I'm going to be playing Emily, and I'll be in the corner responding to the chats and everything like that. And we will make sure that you have the links 
to access the room. Um, and keep in mind that is your own personal link. So uh, the software won't allow you to share that link. So make sure don't forward it to anyone else. That's your own private personal link that has your name attached to it. Um, so that is the link that you will use to access the training just for your one computer. So I can't wait to see you this Saturday. Make sure that you watch this whole video before you start um, for best success. But I promise to leave time um, in the beginning of the training to get any questions out of the way or, you know, really make sure you're totally clear and set up for success. But we will have your first goalie training this Saturday. So you better come prepared, excited and ready to learn.